Hey guys, we are here once again. I hope you guys can see me well and hear me. Sorry for the glare of the room, but if I open up the blinds, it'd be sunny in here and you probably won't be able to see me very well. And I'll need to turn my light on. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed my last few videos. I'm sorry I haven't done videos in a while, y'all, for like one week. I've just been really busy at work. Like I said, there's been some changes here on my channel. So, but today I've got a chance to do a video. And hopefully more like these sometimes. But anyway, get some water. I, of course, continuing my Superman marathon. Uh, where I looked at, I've been on Smallville. Uh, and the next season I'm talking about, this video will be my thoughts slash favorite episodes of Smallville Season 4. Now, I've already done Season 1, Season 2, and Season 3. They are on my channel, and this will be uploaded after I'm done with this video. But Smallville Season 4 is where they finally bring Lois Lane in. Yeah, which, behind the scenes, you know, you got being Lois Lane. Noel Neal, uh, who played, I think, on the George Reeves show, Margaret Kidder, the Christopher Reeve movie, Dan Pellini, who voiced the character in Superman the Anime Series, and Eric Durrance, who was our Lois Lane in Smallville. And others, you know, discussed the character. And the creators of the show, I forgot from Miles Miller, they talked about they wanted, them, they wanted to bring the character of Lois Lane into the show for a while. I guess they wouldn't be able to. But... Yes. What did I think of Smallville Season 4 is I enjoyed this season. Yeah, some stuff, I do have some issues with it. Some of it can be a little weird. Like, said, Smallville can sometimes just be a little too much out there. It's Smallville, but to me, it just gets a little too weird and sometimes a little unnecessary for things they do during the show, which I think you could do without. But that's just me. But Smallville Season 4, let's get into it. And I got my favorite episodes and some more okay episodes are written down right here. So... Make sure my dad is not texting me. But anyway. And this season consists of 22 episodes. Season 4 is basically... What uh, pitch? Sorry. Basically, small little season 4 chronicles around Clark and his classmates' senior year of high school. It centers on his attempt to unite three stones of knowledge, which these are the Kryptonian stones, or relics, if you want to call them. That he needs to get, that he needs to get, because if some bad people get into him, then it won't be wrong. But I'll get more into that when I talk about the season. And trying to cope with Lana's new relationship, which we have a new character, Jason Ackles. He plays Batman in Batman: One Halloween. Yes, who plays Jason Teen, her new love interest? Because at the end of season three, we all know what happened, which I'll explain to that. And Clark friendship with Lex becomes increasingly strained as he begins to distrust Lex more and more during the season. At first, you know, like I said, in season three, if y'all watched, he was mad at him, so, because, of course, like, kept the obsession with the car, and Clark was mad, so. At the end of season three, though, Sam Jones, third he left, who played Pete Ross left, Jason Hill was joined the cast, and Eddie Jones, of course, was cast as Lois Lane, uh, Chloe Sullivan's cousin, so, anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Alright, so let's get into Smallville Season 4 and my favorite episodes of this season. So, five favorites. First of all is the Crusade episode. Yes, yes, Crusade. That is the pilot episode of the fourth season. Uh, of course, after Clark. Basically, it opens up with Lois Lane on the computer watching, watching a video of her cousin, Chloe. And, you know, like, Lois can be sarcastic and everything. Like, she was in the car, is like, Kent, K-E-N-T, they have phones out there in the world, in the farm place, don't they? <laughs> when she's trying to, when she realizes Chloe's missing, so Lois is, of course, Lois Lane is searching for her, of course, fed by Eric Durance here. And Clark, of course, after Jarrell kind of, like, enphases him in the cave, basically turns him into Kell out to embrace his destiny. Basically, the law returns as to Smallville as Kal El. You know, Lois first meets him. He's like, "Who are you?" She's like, "I'm Lois Lane." He's like, "I like the first when she sees him. He turns around. He's naked. Clark's completely butt naked." She's like, "Try not try to look at his face." <laughs> he's like, "You need to get out of here. You're not okay." And then she takes Clark to the hospital. <laughs> and I like it though when she's got a robe, but he takes the robe off and some Chinese lace. She's like, "Oh!" <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, Jonathan Ken has been in a, a 
been in a coma for three months. Yes, this takes three months after the third season because after the cave where he tried to save Clark, but Jor-El attacked him, and because of that somewhat connection to Clark, he's in a deep coma. But Martha, who's been, you know, the doctors tell her, well, you know, we need to put Jonathan down. You know, we're not going to we'll take him off life support. like, no, my, my life is there in that bed. I'm not giving up on him. I like her encouragement that Martha just stands to fight for these three months. You know, she sees Clark, she's happy. And we need to recognize her. She takes him home. Lois then is like, wait a minute, can't Clark can't? But then there we get away. And Lois tell, I mean, Lois Martha, but we also find out like uh, about Lex. Of course, Lex got sick because his father, Lex, is in uh, Egypt. I think he's in Egypt, somewhere part of the world. Yeah, Lex gets his hands on a, one of the stones. He's, he's basically trying to get better because his dad, his father, poisoned him. So of course, Lex wants to find these relics. He finds it in Egypt. He's got Doctor Shark in him and. Pretty much, you know, when Martha takes, I'm sorry, I just bounce everywhere, but kill out. I mean, when she takes Clark to say, that's your father, he's like, that's the man trying to give me for my destiny. He's like, he's not my father. And she's like, Clark, and he hears that ringing again with the stone, he's doing this. And he's like, Clark King is dead. He's like, he's like you know, Martha is like, no, kill out. No, no, Clark. I want my son back. I want my son back. You know, telling Kilo she wants to be Kilo. Of course, this is the first time we've seen Clark. Well, as Kilo, just as Kilo, he flies. I'm like, that was an awesome scene. Definitely well shot. I thought, you know, the CGI is the greatest, but it's a TV show. You don't really have the big budget, but Clark flies into the airplane, opens the door, and is able to use Kilo is able to grab the grab the stone and fly away. And Lex sees, but it's too late because Kilo's already swooped away. And he takes it back to the ending, to the cave, where he puts it in the, puts it in this stone or whatever. It's like a kind of like a Kryptonian stone where he puts it, in, puts it in. And of course, we also have a character named Bridget Crosby. Of course, he was played by Margaret Kidder. So we have Margaret Kidder in this season. And if y'all don't know who she is, she was the original Lois Lane in Christopher Reeve films. She says, Hey, Martha, how are you? I'm Richard Crosby. I love for Dr. Richard Swan. like, And she's like, Dr. Swan promised Clark that he wouldn't leave. And she's like, It hasn't left the ground. It hasn't. But Lois needs to help. We also get a new form of kryptonite, which is called black kryptonite. And Lois, by the way, who is still investigating her cousin's death, I mean, well, Chloe's death, it goes basically is trying to tell Martha, I need Clark's help. And he's telling us that he's sleeping. I just go to where and he's like, please, Mrs. Kent, I really need him. When Clark wakes up, tell him I need him. He's like, I, I will. You know, she can understand what Lois is going through. Because uh, we pretty much think that Chloe, the house, her safe house blew up at the end of season three. Uh, Clark, I mean, likes us to go visit his father in prison, talks to him about the relics. He's like, did you take it? Did you steal it? And he's like, Lex, I did not steal it. I grew my son. I didn't do that. And Lionel, of course, is in prison basically because he murdered his parents, confessed to it in the third season. So basically, he's got, he's pretty much bald in this season. He still grows his hair back, but he's pretty much bald. And Lois tries to even talk to Lionel. And he's like, I didn't, I, you know, your cousin died because of her own actions. Because I kept mine in the bargain, she didn't. She's dead because of her own actions. I had nothing to do with it. Good day, Miss Lane. And though Lois is like, yeah, able to more like intimidate him. Maybe him a little bit. Because <laughs> she suspects Lionel, of course, you know, had the money and resources, even though he's in jail, still has the resources to get to her. And, you know, to, to murder Chloe. And Lana, I forgot to mention, of course, is in Paris. Uh, she basically has a new boyfriend, Jason Teague, and we see them kind of talk on the street a little bit, and then we see him kiss, and basically she has a science project to do. Uh, it's basically like this old stuff. It's like this place where like an old, basically where witches, which I'll get more into that later, but she touches this stone, and it like powers up, and, then, and eventually she gets this tattoo behind her back, and you know, she wakes up in the morning with Jason knocking on the door. He's like, where you been at, you know, Lana? We were supposed to meet for dinner. 
you know, for lunch. And Lana takes a shower after realizing that she's wondering how this tattoo got on her back, what it is, you know. She realizes that because she tells us that it's gone. She does decides to tell, not tell Jason, but of course decides to go back to Smallville to rent out the apartment, and of course Jason comes with her because he wants to be with her. And uh, pretty much at the end, Martha uses the black kryptonite and Kal-El and Clark, Clark the, the Clark Kent comes out, and basically what black kryptonite does is it separates two people, a good side and a bad side, and does that to uh, Clark and Kal-El, and Clark and Kal-El start fighting, of course Clark wins, and his parents said that you, you know, Jonathan Wesley was like, you, you flew? Your mother told me that? like, yeah, it felt great, well, kal can fly, but it felt amazing, dead, and scary. And pretty much, Lois, we see at the end of at the graveyard, at the grave, at Chloe's grave, saying, "I'm sorry, cuz that I wasn't there for you and miss you." And he's like, "You're not the only one, Lois." You know, he's like, "Oh, Clark, did you see the clothes on?" You know, because they like mess with each other. He's like, "But I hope you find the truth, okay?" And Clark uses his X-ray vision and see, he even says, "Lois, Chloe's not dead," and that's the end of Crusade episode. So. All right, another favorite. Yeah, that was Crusade. And next one is Gone. So uh, it continues on from Crusade, where Clark and Lois are still investigating. They go to like a military plate. Well, they go to the safe house to search for evidence. I think Clark is able to find something. Um. Anyway. The army shows up and Lois runs and Clark, of course, doesn't even have to run because they follow the military a bit and the military try to attack Clark, but of course we know of his powers, so one guy shows to, you know, electrocute Clark, I think with his tongue on Clark, just grabs him and just pushes him aside. Lois can handle herself, though. She's not damsel on distress. Damsel on distress, but the plane is, like, over her, so Clark uses heat vision not to kill him or anything, just to knock the plane out, you know, to do that. And then later on, as they're escaping, we see General Sam Lane, played by uh, Michael Ironside, of course, who, he's been for the Superman mythology before. He uh, he voiced, in Superman the anime series, he voiced Darkseid. So, yeah, but he plays General Sam Lane, who was Lois Lane's father. And Lois suspects that her father might know something, uh, her and Clark take a shower, well not take a shower, but Clark takes a shower, she wakes Clark is like, is like, well you're the one taking the marathon shower, and I spent my first time getting a glimpse of Clark Jr. <laughs> it's a little funny moment there, and the parent, and Martha walks in, and she's like, hi Mrs. Kent, and, and the, why are you two taking a shower? We're taking a shower, we were just doing it separately, and I was like, this is awkward, I'm walking away. And later on, General Sam Lane shows up, wants to thank him for the hospitality, he wants to give John the cigars, like, I know I appreciate it, General, but, you know, I can't do it because of my heart problems, because remember, Jonathan has heart problems now, after season three, so. Um, you also find out that Lionel really did try to have her killed, so he has this guy, he's an assassin, I forget the assassin's name, named Trim McGowan, He's basically metal morphing. He got he get metal like swords into his hands. His hands were kind of like T two almost. That's what it kind of reminded me of. He tries to attack Lois like at first. Lois is kind of used Lois. No, not Lois, but he knocks Lois down. And of course, as Trent tries to knock him down, tries to use his sword to kill Lois. Lana shows up and pepper sprays him in the face. And I'm like, oh, what a weak villain. But they kick his ass and, and Lois is like, thank you, Long. She's like, thank you. It was like, Lois Lane. Lois Lane. That was a cool way for them to meet. And then she shows up. They, she takes Lois to the phone. She's like, oh, hey, Lois. Hey, Lana. is like, there's that tension between them. I'm like, I'm seeing some, there's some tension between you. You used to date. Well, yeah, we used to. <laughs> yeah. And you also find out, uh, there's been some spoilers that Chloe, I mean, Lex Luthor, Lex, that he hit Chloe. 
and didn't tell Clark about it. He tells her that, of course, we we'll find out that Chloe is really not dead, that a security team find out some suspicious, so they have like a like an indoor cave in the house, well, like an inside door in the house where they can go, I mean, an, an inside tunnel. So Chloe and her father with the security team go there. Uh, we find out that Trent, of course, kidnaps Chloe. So Lois and Clark have to save her. Well, you know Lionel does because Lionel, in this episode, by taking a shower, gets stabbed, you know, right here in the stomach. And he tells Trent, I need you to help an order for me to get out of here. I have to help you. Because he's being set for trial. On trial for murder. So, um, anyway. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Lois and Chloe eventually find Chloe. And, but they have to take on the knife guy a little bit. Clark is able to take him on. He, he's able to, like, Clark phase. And Clark phases through him. And Clark has to fight him. Except Lois shows up and fights him. He's like, and they take the guy out, and they take Trent out. He burns in the lava. Well, because Clark is able to use his heat vision. Lois is, well, he blows his Nobel's powers, of course. He's like, what would you do without me? And they say, Clark, well, they give Chloe a little last reunion between her and Clark. And, of course, Lois, because, you know, give each other a hug. And, yeah. and the episode pretty much ends with, Lo I mean, with uh, Lyle being accused of murder and... Lois is back. So, when, you know, you see her. Yeah, and that's the end of the, that's the gone episode. But anyway, good episode. Really enjoyed it. Another favorite episode of mine is an episode called Facade. Uh, this episode is basically... Oh, yeah. Well, you have Jason T, who is his boyfriend, who comes to the school to get a job at Smallville High School as the assistant football coach. They try to keep it from the school and of course Clark. You have this girl named Abby Fine who is, well, she's a little bit disfigured looking. Well, she's just like has this in her face. Not the prettiest girl, but you know, you really want to be mean to somebody like that. And basically people make fun of her, call her, you know, Abby Scabby. So we got to make fun of her. And this was, we see Clark in his freshman year trying to throw football, even though he misses because they make fun of Scabby, they make fun of Abby because she's their pro, their mascot, and they mock her, and he feels sorry for her. And her, four years later, for her senior year, her mother changes her face, and she looks really hot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Even Clark is like, well, even Clark is like, well, what the change, Abby? Well, Clark is her senior year. This is our life. You know, want it to be remembered. Uh, her mother, who's a plastic surgeon, gives her this face with, of course, the meter rocks, able to make her look like, you know, beautiful, basically. And basically, the guys just have a hot fire. The guy that made fun of her, of course, you know, comes to throw with her. Donna walks by, sees them flirting together. He's like, the girl you named Skippy Abby is like, I'm sorry about that. I apologize for that, Abby. And they pretty much go to the the football shit and the, the foot and the in the lockers and they go in the shower make out a little bit but when he kisses her she has this effect when she kisses people you see you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like oh my god my ugliness my face well well anyway the guy she makes out with he's like oh my face oh. and then he runs runs out and Lois says he's going to hit some of the car oh by the way Lois sorry Lois in this episode is told by her father Jr. Sloan Sam Wayne she doesn't have enough credits to graduate college so she has to go back to small to high school just for a bit to get those credits yeah of course her and Chloe drive there and but sorry uh anyway Abby feels bad about it goes to her mother like what did you do to me you know she looks at Lana's tattoo. Lana's getting her tattoo checked. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> she tells her mother that Lana was there. You know. And it's like, you've got to take care of Lana. And, you know, Abby doesn't really want to hurt. She's not really a villain. It's more like her mother is the whole time. And Lois, of course, she's trying to get credits. She joins the torch. Uh, which join, to, jo uh, to join the torch, she has to get credit. So she does some writing a little bit. You know, even her clothes is... 
You might be a future journalist. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think it's for me. But of course, we would know Lois Lane will be the journalist that she will become. So, but this show is basically before these characters become who they are, as we know in, in the world of Superman. So, but anyway, uh, Abby, of course, you know uh, her. Well, of course, no one can't know about Jason and Lana's secret relationship at school because they do. Jason will get fired and she will get detention. So they have to keep it on the low at school and stuff of kissing or whatever. They just go spend all the time together and Jason's got a surprise for her and Abby shows up because Lana has got like a, a what do you call it, like a little hidden face mask to your eyes. Oh, she's got a blindfold and Abby comes up to her and gives her a kiss. And Lana's like, sees her, sees her face, says, like, oh my God, what's happening to my face? What's happening to my face? And of course, the mayor falls on her, and she ends up in the hospital. Uh, Lois does some investigating and finds out about this, the beauty place, investigates Abby's mother, and when Abby's mother finds out that Lois works for the torch and tries to expose her, she knocks Lois out, well, basically just gives her a, sh a sedative shot. He's going to try to make her ugly, basically turn her that way. You know, Lois is like, I don't be beating this up, which good point, you know. But she tries to do that. Clark comes to save, Lo I mean, to save. Yeah. Oh yeah, her mother, Dr. Brown, yeah. Dr. Brown tries to do this experiment on Lois, but Clark shows up. He's able to get her out of there, but the kryptonite goes off, and of course he's weakened by it. And Lois helps him get out of there. She she just kicks the hell out of this lady. And I like the scene, though, where she's helping Clark. She saves him. And, you know, Mrs. Dr. Brown tries to attack, and then Lois, like, kicks her behind. You know, just uses her foot. Kicks her, she's like, bitch, you know. <laughs> Which I like that. And of course, Abby gets help at the end. And it was a good episode. I liked it because I think it, this episode, the message, I get the message of it. You know, that PD is on the inside, not the outside. And you shouldn't judge people for the way they look. Because Abby was not a villain. This. But it was a good episode. I liked it. Yeah. But anyway, that was Facade. And another favorite. Okay, we're not done yet. And then an episode called Devoted. Pretty much we find out in this episode that these cheerleaders, of course one played by Mandy, one of these cheerleaders, they spike the football players with a kryptonite and chance love potions because Mandy wants to spend time with her boyfriend. Oh yeah, I think in Facade, Clark also joins the football team. I think I forgot to mention that. But anyway, devoted, uh, shit. <laughs> Basically, Mandy uses the love potion on her boyfriend, and you know, Clark's like, "Did we walk into?" You know, Lois like, "Did we walk into some weird world or something?" They use this love potion on the guys, on the football players, and their hands and knees to them, carry yeah, their purses, help them do their makeup and all that stuff. Completely devoted to them. Uh, Clark, of course, after joining the football team, even though I think in, I think it was this episode over something like that. At first, Jonathan is like, no, Clark, you can't do it. You know, does not support it, but, of course, Clark is able to make his own decisions, and because of his powers, well, Jonathan tells him, well, you know what son of football is? You're going to be tempted to do so run faster, throw the ball harder, get a little more mad. That's what football is, son. Do whatever it takes to win. You know. And Clark joined the football team. You know, first of all, the players don't like him. Uh, because Clark had to save Jason, who almost got shot by, got killed. One of the both guys, Mandy's boyfriend, tries to kill Jason for looking with a shotgun for looking at Mandy. Tries to shoot him. Clark uses heat vision, snaps him out of it. The guy doesn't remember, but he ends up in trouble. So Clark ends up being the player, and they don't like Clark at first, and Jason takes the drink out of it when he sees that drinks out of the drink. He's like, you know, there is something special in my life when he tells Mandy, one of the cheerleaders, that. And he sees that Clark and Lana are talking. He's just talking. like, hey, why don't you hear support and shooting me on the football team? He's like, yeah, Clark, I am. And, of course, Jason isn't like that. He gets jealous. And he's like, 
be hard on Kent, get him. And Thorpe drinks the kryptonite drink, and of course, doesn't affect him. Just makes him, you know, because he doesn't feel good from it. It makes Clark sick, and it weakens him. So the football players ever knock him down a couple times. And after being hurt from football, goes home for the night on the barn. It's like Coach T comes to visit him and says, starts beating him up. You know, at first, like I said, him and Lex were not talking at first. They weren't being friends anymore. Until, you know, Lex shows up and stops Jason from beating, from almost killing Clark. And of course, the kryptonite goes away. Clark gets back. Like, I swear, swear this is And I was like, well, maybe I just heal fast. <laughs> and I guess they're back to me and friends. Uh, Chloe also gets a sip of the. Chloe gets a sip of the the kryptonite drink. the kryptonite drink and becomes the brother of Clark. She still has those romantic feelings for him because you know, Chloe has always had romantic feelings for Clark. And then when she turns to motion and Chloe's out there, she even you know wears nothing but his football. Um, that uh. uh his football t his football jersey. <laughs> she goes out there as a cheer player goes out there as a cheer like, Give me a Clark, C A L A in a R R K, you know. <laughs> and it's just it's just funny, it's like what was it like, what the heck? And so he's like, What? You know. Because again she she nearly attacks Lois, but Lois is able to get her on the furnace. Her hands on the furnace, she's like, I don't wanna hurt you and when she gets on the furnace she's back to normal. So, you know, Lois is able to investigate this, find out the potion, and gets Clark to go seduce Mandy. It works. Him and Mandy are making out while Lois is finding that she's trying to get the bag, the name for the potion. And when they they tell her the jig is up, they tell her the jig is up. Well, uh, she's like, no, it's not. You know, and she basically tries to kill, not kill. Uh, well, she basically has the guy comes in and baseball attack them. Clark, Lois tries to. She knocks one of them out. Clark, every use heat vision real quick, is able to get them to the heat, the, the va you know, this pipe that was heat on them and gets them back to normal. Yeah, Clark causes extreme, the extreme part of the bus to the steam pumps in order to negate the low potions, yes. Yeah, but the Voodoo was a good episode. Yeah, even though, yeah. I mean, yeah, a guy should be devoted to a girlfriend, but not to the point where he wants to kill somebody or beat somebody up. But overall, it was a good episode. It was good to see Clark eventually trying to play football. Because he does play football in this season a little bit. So he's always wanted to play football. He just couldn't kiss Jonathan because of his ability. But it was a good episode. But anyway, that was devoted. Thank paper. And then another episode of mine is called Run. Uh, this is where we meet a kid named Bart Allen, of course, uh, aka The Flash, who will become The Flash, I guess. But anyway, Clark and his dad decide to go to a football game, to a Met U football game, Metropolis. Uh, we see Bart in the beginning. Basically stealing from these thieves, this, I guess, uh, Lone Shark, who he basically steals from. Again, he can do anything he wants. He can run. He runs. He's very fast. Of course, we know the Flash runs, and Barry can run at the speed of light, so he's very fast. Anyway, he sees Jonathan and Clark and is able to get there before Clark can. He pushes his dad out of the way. Clark's like, well, Clark, he's still my wallet. And Clark does some investigating with, with Chloe's help and talks to Bart. And he's like, uh, Barry Allen. You know, Wally West, you know, and some of the names from the comics. Uh, Bart's like, okay. Uh, Clark tries to go back, tries to chase him down, you know, tries to run him, but of course, Flash, well, Bart is of course faster than we can't catch him. Bart can also run through water, yes. Literally stand on water and run through it, you know. And Clark is like, well, wow. Clark goes back to the house, like, Clark. Dad, I couldn't get your wall back. The kid got it. He's just too fast. He's like, Clark, oh, the kid, no, he's right there. And Clark is like, and then they kind of, he starts to want to hang out with Clark. He's like, it's cool to meet somebody different from me. He's like, well, you from another planet? No, it was like, I, you know, I got struck by lightning. That's how I got my powers. 
you know, and then he, he runs around the bed. I'll even see where Bart eats a cookie. And <laughs> Clark is like, what are you doing? I mean a cookie, dude. I'm hungry. <laughs> and he was like, Clark, come on, man. Let's just go hang out. You know, let's be cool. He's like, okay, Clark, let me get you figured out. So you love Indian stuff. You know, you're, you love searching Indian Indian caves and stuff. Uh, you're in love with Long Lane because you wrote her name dozens of times on this paper. And you're this, and you're that, and he's like, and you got, and you're like green rocks, and it's kryptonite. He throws the kryptonite. He's like, well, you okay, dude? He's like, get rid of that thing, Clark, because it's kryptonite. He's like, anyway, Clark, let's just go have some fun. So they run to Miami, Florida, to Florida. We don't see them, but they have a good time. They come back to the Talon, and him barking out. Well, I mean, Chloe shows up, and Bart, Bart, uh, Bart flirts with Chloe, while Clark has to give a few legs. Slice gets this paper of a map that can be Kryptonian. And Clark sees that as like, I don't need, you know, he doesn't want him to know about that. Bart shows up, you know, Lex Luthor, man, that dude's a rich. He's got like 50 cores and like, Clark shows up to him about, you know, not stealing. He's like, well, you know, you know, stealing is wrong, you shouldn't do it. Hey, man, I got my powers, I can do whatever I want. Well, it doesn't make it right. You know, Clark shows up tell him, you know, you can't use your powers, use them for good. That's what Clark's trying to say. And, uh, Bart eventually, you know, Steals that map from Lex's mansion. Clark is there, but like, Clark, what the hell? Because Lex has security detail over it. When you touch it, it makes it loud, loud, very loud alarm. But Lex was just trying to keep it safe. Yeah, Lex buys his current manuscript with the Kryptonian symbols. Yeah, but anyway, when he steals the manuscript, the map, uh, he goes to the back to the Lone Shark, and this time they pass Bar Bart out, and it says, Mr. Luther, we got him for you. And Lex is like, no, you're not going to kill this kid. You're not going to let him go. And of course, Lex tries to fight, fight, fight with the guy, fight with the guy that the Lone Shark knocks him out. Clark shows up, able to knock the guys out, able to just push the Lone Shark, push him out the push him out the door, and he tells him that he won't be here. And since Bart doesn't want to let him, he uses the green kryptonite rock and says, Clark, I can't, sorry, but I can't let you do this. I gotta, he goes, Clark, he's like, this isn't you, Bart. This isn't you, Bart. You can, come on, please help me. Don't do this. And he's like, okay, Clark. And then he runs off. And at the end, he gives the manuscript back. And I guess you can say Bart has a change of heart. Becomes, you know, better. And, you know, he says, it's cool hanging out with somebody like me. And, you know, this is, an interesting episode because Clark is hanging out with somebody, of course, who has abilities like him. Which is cool. And then him and Bart decide to have run at the end. They, and of course, you know, Bart, like, see you later, runs faster and Clark's like, <laughs> you know, smiling at the end. And that's the end of the run episode. But that was great. I like how they brought the Flash in here. Well, even though his name was Bart, even though I wish it was Barry instead, but, you know. And then another favorite episode is called Transference. Uh, pretty much you find out that Lionel, well, one of the stones, when Clark is playing football in the beginning, and Jason T's like, well, you, you know, you have some college folks, you know, come to look at you, see if you want to join the football team that met you, and Clark's like, yeah. And then, of course, he's like, ah! One of the stones go off, you find that Lex is visiting his dad in jail, and Clark runs to the prison, sees Lex and Lionel sitting at the prisoner center, and sees that Lionel has the stone and is going about to use it Clark put he's like Lex watch out and then he picks one up Lionel then uses the stone in Clark's hand and of course it makes them switch bodies kind of like a Freaky Friday type thing and of course Clark now in Lionel's body and Lionel is now in Clark's body so Lionel well in Clark's body Lionel is like Lex is like what the hell Clark what did you do for like oh, I don't know like I uh he had a knife Gun, you know, knife. Lex would, would stab you. But anyway, Lex, let's, let's get out of here. And Clark is like, and I was like, no, no, we're in prison. No, we're in prison. We're not supposed to be here. Uh, anyway, Lionel, who is, you know, sees Jonathan, realizes Clark has these powers. And he's like, well, this is amazing. He feels better. He starts putting on nice shirts. You know, as Lionel likes to dress nicely. 
He tries to get into his bank account, but he can't a few times. And he finds out that Lights changed the password. Third time he tries to threaten Clark. Clark is in prison and on his body. Well, basically, he finds out, you know, that this guy that was helping him, this kind of weird eccentric guy who I've seen some Disney Channel movies, talks to him about the stone that Lionel found it, wanted to use it to escape prison. You know, uh, Clark and on his body gets a beaten up by one of the prisoners. Again, he didn't have one of his powers. So, guy threatens to kill him the next day. Uh, so, when he visits Clark and Jill, you know, while he threatens to kill anybody he loves with his powers, and even kill, threatens to kill Lex, so he tells him and it doesn't work. Uh, throughout the episode, Lyle does so many things, like he tries to put the moves on to Chloe, and of course, says, well, what if final Luther got out of prison, Chloe? And his trust kids are like, don't you wish? And he sees, he finds out that Lana, and he sees Lana, walks in, Jason Lana, kissing in Jason's office. And he's like, whoa, you know. And, you know, Lana's like, Clark, please don't tell nobody. He's like, he's like, I won't tell nobody. Yeah, I don't care, whatever, you know. He's like, I'm sure any man would come up over to any continent just to pluck you. And he's like, so don't speak to me like that. And, of course, Lionel, being the jerk he is, grabs on and kisses her and just laughs about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, Lionel, who, of course, has always been, had a crush on Martha, being in love with her, basically his heart is like, hug me, and he gives her a hug, and, of course, getting a little excited about it, uses the heat vision, goes crazy. That's when Clark looks at a woman, or a woman, he becomes attracted, or something like that, and he's like, I'm not putting it out with your hands. <laughs> And I like it though when Jason D tells him that the, the college professors are coming to look at him. College leads or whatever, kind of looking for football. I was like, eh, coach, I'm not interested in football. But I like it when Jonathan does this. And Lana turns around. <laughs> uh, Lionel in the Clark's Body Show goes to visit Lex. Like, Lex, I need to get my hands on $57 million. And I was like, why, Clark? He's like, you know why. And when he sees me in the brandy, Lex does something about me, he tries to get his gun, of course, Clark, while he uses the powers, he's like, Lex, I gave everything to you. you know, I'm, your, I'm your father. And he's like, Dad? You know. And Martha, by the way, by now, who, thanks to Clark calling her in prison, you know, first the thing she's been lying to me, he said, but then she tells him about a memory about he, uh, Clark tells her about a memory when he was a child when he accidentally went on super speed when he was a kid and he was like remember mama he said I was your special boy your special boy and you know basically he's using kryptonite to stop Clark I mean stop <laughs> Lionel getting confused now Lionel runs over there attacks Jonathan and he's like I don't know what you're talking about and of course I guess you could say he sets up a trap Clark does because the guy calls him was like, uh, we need to talk right now, ACP. He's like, Lionel, is that really you know when he comes to visit again? He's like, no. Lionel's like, no, it's the Easter Bunny. Now, what do you need to tell me? He's like, the transference is about to stop. So unless you kill the person in your body, murder them, you'll be them forever. But if not, you'll go back to being you. And so he just has to kill him eventually. The prison breaks out. Clark is able to fight off that prisoner, eventually knock him out. And Lionel does it attack Clark and Clark is able to get the stone, tricks him and then puts it back and then he switch bodies and Lionel was like crying just because just, he just forgets what happened, forgets about Clark's powers like, well, like, almost like he parts on angel in his mind Lionel of course he was dying from a liver disease, cancer, gets healed of it he's like, doctor I'm getting healed and after this he decides to become a better person well a better man because of it but either way, it was an entertaining episode. I really enjoyed it. So, and he goes back. Clark goes back to Lex, tell me sorry. He's like, he's like, what was the joke about? You know, Josh Sauber when they first met. He's like, Clark. But Transference was a really good episode. And then another favorite episode of mine called Bound. This is where Lex, in the beginning, he's at a charity auction. 
party and he sees a woman which is played by I know the actress's name Kobe Devo I can't look her up but she's of course you know in the MCU films just don't want to kind of look it up but Lex of course makes out with this woman this woman you know they go to basically his hotel room do this Lex wakes up the next morning um May lady walks in and screams and Lex sees that this woman's dead he's like and then Lex is of course being charged for murder and why well, not you know we find out things that Lex has met some women before not the moment things but we should find out later that he might have mistreated some women uh, Clark decides to help his friend out Lionel offers to help as well Clark on inside about it of how we can help him just go look this way basically point him to the right direction he's like well Clark I just want to be a better man and of course Clark believes him because he likes to see wants to see the good in people even in Lionel you know uh, Lionel meets Jason's mother Jenny T who played by Jane Seymour of course we should know Jane Seymour from uh, I know if I'm living, I die, and somewhere in time with Christopher Reeve. So maybe that super connect, Superman connection there, because I have somewhere in time she was in that movie with like Christopher Reeve playing his love interest. But anyway, she's Jason's mother, and Jason finds out about it. Like she's not here to go; she's up to something. And Jason thinks did, did his mother have arranged some kind of a meeting between that? Because we found out that Lana, you know, that this tattoo is a symbol of a witch named Isabella which you find out later Lana has a dream about it and sees J Jason's mother there which you know what she means is like just weird yeah but Lex and meanwhile you know when Clark's trying to help him he tries to hide evidence he tries to burn evidence which never gets him in trouble he's like you know, why are you doing that, Lex? You know, Lex even tells him this season, you know, we all have a dark side, but mine, mine is just always creeping around the corner just to get me. Uh, but we find out that, of course, this woman is not actually dead, that she, it was another woman, she set him up. This woman basically wanted revenge because she thought Lex wanted to be with her. He, of course, has some past relationships where he hooked up with women. You know, all the if I would hook up the women, that's what Luther's would do. Hook up with a woman, give them flowers or something, or earrings. Just to brush off the relationship. This woman took it personal. She loved her husband, so... And Lex never recognized her, which made drove her crazy, so... She basically tries to... She turn, she ties Clark... I mean, Lex up to a chair. Tries to burn him, and of course Clark comes on time. Uses super speed to push the woman away, knock her out, and of course stop the fire. Yeah and saves his life and they're like well Lex do that so he so I think so was like can you really trust Lex you know even though they've been friends for a while but that was a really good episode I liked how they went to the inside of Lex a little more that of course he has done some dark deeds and that he's you know mistreated some women and he's done some stuff some secrets that you know can Clark really trust Lex as a friend you know and I like that you know interesting episode so I liked that really good episode Alright. In an episode called Scare. Uh, this episode is that Lex has a secret experiment with the corp, which of course is this fear toxin that goes away, goes out, those people people get infected like Chloe. Uh, Chloe I think is the first one infected. Basically this fear toxin infects people. Chloe like sees her mother in the her mother in a, like an asylum and you know she you know, she's got a straight hair she's like ah you know in fear Lana sees the, her parents you know on the autopsy table and herself you know like a zombie version of herself saying they're all gonna leave you and Lana screams to death and passes out and people start getting scared and even Jonathan and Martha are passing out and Lex and his scientists are trying to figure out the problem Clark does get an emergency of it you know of the of the of the disease um, basically seeing Lana you know seeing another meteor shower happen and Lana's like that was you? you're the one that came in there? you're, you're the reason my parents are dead that Lana might have some anger toward him that's what he's always been afraid of that Lana would hate, hate him 
So, of course, Clark, I mean, so she basically just tries to stab Clark. He gets up out of the coma, unlike everybody else. Uh, basically, since everyone's fallen to the coma and small, you know, Lex, you know, they show, show us that, you know, Clark shows up to the experiment, I mean, to the facility, and tells Lex, you know, I'm going to help out, even though it's not just this go away, you know, it's like, no, he can be here. And Clark heats up the, the vials, which he basically is heat vision, containing them, and while Lex is not looking, so Lex decides to with the antidote, basically puts the antidote on himself and passes out. And of course, like we saw in season one, he has his fear of who he will eventually become the murderous monster or the Lex Luthor we know from the comics that the character that we know of Lex Luthor of him being in the old White House, being in the, the old office with his black glove, glove, black, glove, black glove, and you know, with a white tuxedo and Basically, missiles going off, and basically, him just smelling flowers, and you know, basically, of all the people that he's going to murder in the future, and blood raining down about him. But eventually, the cure gets better, and everyone gets better. But still, it was a good episode. It was just to see people face their fears, you know, because deep down, we all have some kind of a fear, and I thought it was an interesting episode. But scared, good episode. Yeah, I liked it. All right. And then another favorite of mine is called, the episode is called Unsafe. Well, pretty much we get Sarah Carter back, who, of course, we get a character named Alicia Baker back. Alicia Baker, of course, who was in the third season. Uh, it was, I think it was an episode called Possession. She was a girl that was basically Clark's girlfriend. She has the power, the ability to turn, not invisible, but to transfer herself to, uh, ability just to, disappear wherever she wants to in the negative time. Kind of like uh, Nightcrawler almost, but she basically gets out of prison, gets out of the belt reef until her doctor keeps an eye on her, so she decides to go apologize to Clark. She tried to, oh yeah, by the way, she was stalking Clark, tries to kill Clark Kryptonite and try to kill Lana, so, you know. But Alicia's back and she's like, Clark, I'm sorry for what I did to you. You know, I just want to rekindle my relationship with you. It's like, I got this brace on investment from using my abilities. You know, this is in my blood. And so when Clark one day, they go to this, you know, they kind of go ice skating. And Clark's been lonely ever since I haven't lawn anymore. He's just been lonely and, you know, dating somebody that knows a secret. He wants to do that. And the same time again, her doctor pretty much tells her, you will not see Clark Kent. He's like, well, why do you Clark Kent's my business? Are you, he's like, or either I'll kill Clark Kent. He basically burns Clark. And so Alicia decides the best way to get away from her doctor is just to run away. And she tries to Tim Clark with it. So she basically goes into the torch, finds the red K, red kryptonite, which, you know, makes Clark lose his inhibitions. Basically just turns into a bad boy and basically uses it. And they go get married in Vegas. You know, and it's like, yeah, Pops get to be your part. And he's like, you would take this woman to be your brother's wife? He's like, hell yeah. He's like, oh, you make kiss and they start kissing. They foreplay, you know, well, not that way, but, you know, make out a little bit. You know, put, mess around a bit until she takes off the, the bracelet. Clothes like, why'd you do that to me? He's like mad at her for it. So he's like being angry at her. And Martha and Jonathan are just angry with Clark. And Martha's like, Clark. You took a girl halfway around the world and you married her. That was ridiculous and stupid for you to do that. Well, Mars and the break came up. They're, they're just angry with him for doing that. Oh, by the way, Jason and Clark, I mean, damn it, Jason and Lana, Jason, of course, decided at some point to leave Lana because he thinks that she wasn't mature enough. Even, you know, he did get fired from his job. Mature enough to, of course, want to have sex, and she decides to have sex with him. So, the rest of they, I guess they, if I don't remember, they do. But of course, it does bring Jason back. But anyway, it was a good episode. Now I like see Alicia come back. And now, in the next episode, it's called Perry Para. Can't say it right. But in this episode. Uh, Clark, you know, I like it when Lois and, uh, Lo uh, yeah, Lois and Lois 
And well, we see we don't see Lois very much in this season. By the way, for every Darren's in here, I think it's just guest starring. Yeah, she just she only guest stars in the after the Crusade and Gone episode. Uh, you know, after the facade episode devoted, she basically leaves to go to college. Lois does, so we see her every now and then in Smallville. Because again, she's just a guest appearance. Oh, hope y'all like my Space Jam shirt. No, I don't want to see Space Jam in New Legacy, no interest, but my mom got it for me, so. Excuse me. Um. They were partying at the Callan and Chloe and. Well, ugh, Chloe. Lois and Chloe. Lois and Chloe. Lois and Chloe are singing up there, you know. For him. There was a good song they're singing. Lois is like, what with this guy? And. They show up. It's like, yeah, 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 pretension begins. And people don't like Alicia because what she did, especially Lana. And she shows like, Lana, I'm sorry for what I did. He was like, you tried to kill me. You know, how can I possibly forgive you for that? You know. But you can understand why she's mad. But then anyway, later on that night, uh, her and Jason are in the apartment. Lana says, take a shower. And someone basically uses the shower curtain to strangle her. And of course, they accuse her of doing it. And, you know, Part tries to help her out. Basically, Jason gets attacked with a robe or scarf, scarf that belonged to Alice. And he's like, "Let's go to the place." And he's like, he's "Like you don't believe me, dude?" He's like, he's like, "No." And she disappears. Alicia, of course, wants him to understand that she did not do it. So she, in this episode, by the way, Chloe ends up finding about Clark's secret because he's like, "I'll give you a scoop. You won't believe Chloe." And they go in the car, they drive past, like, Clark, help us! And then they, she disappears, they look over there, and Chloe's like, Clark, move out of the way! And Clark catches the car, and Chloe's like, She's like, Clark? Wow. During the episode, though, when she finds out the secret, she, she says not to Clark. She's, like, hinted about it, like, Clark, you're just superhuman. You know, but she doesn't want to let Clark know about it, because she doesn't want their friendship to become bad or anything. But, yeah. And sadly, at the end, we find out it's a guy named who basically who has sand powers. He can turn his body into sand and attack people. Tim Westcott, who pretty much responsible for the murders. Clark. Anyway, Alicia sadly he pretty much murders her, hangs hangs her because she starts taking to the police. So he hangs her, and Clark is upset, and mad, and. Tim, he attacks Tim. He just, because Tim thinks if something's wrong that Lana and Jason shouldn't be in the relationship, that's why he attacked them. And my Lois is like, well, they're all 18. They're pretty much adults. They can do that. You know, but it still doesn't make it right. So he says, well, in his obsessed, crazy mind. Basically, kills Alicia. Like, I mean, Clark provides him. They fight. He punches Clark, gives him a good punch. But Clark is able to show him use his powers to attack Clark, like, feel the sandstorm of Clark. He's able to use heat vision. Grabs him, is choking the guy, and Lois is like, Clark, stop, stop, you know. It's not worth it, it's not worth it. You know. And he's like, you know, he's like, Alicia's grave, he's like, I'm sorry, Alicia, I didn't believe you. And also, uh, Genevieve T, Jay Seymour, returns to Smallville with an offer for Lex, basically, for her son. Yeah. Anyway, Perry was a good episode. Now, it was good to see Alicia back and see her become a better person. But it was also sad to see her get murdered. So, and Clark, you know, having to witness that. Another favorite episode of mine is called Crypto. Now, we're not even done yet. Pretty much you have this dog with a name Shelby. His name's Einstein at first. But anyway, Einstein and Hercules, these guys who are using the dogs to basically, you know, enhance them. Kryptonite, these dogs can attack people. You know, the White Waller dog, uh, Hercules, attacks a man, mows him to death nearly, while Einstein robs the money, Einstein rolls away, gets hit by Lois, of course he ends up being fine. Clark sees this and definitely wants his dog. Even though they said, we need to find somebody for him first. And, you know, they decide to take Einstein up. I like it though when he sneezes and Clark's like, oh good, I like him. They would keep Lois away from me. <laughs> as they tease each other. Uh, they try to take him to the vet and of course one of the vet guys is actually one of the robbers as well. Which they don't know that. 
And Clark, I mean, the guy is like, I'll take the dog. We know we will take him overnight. And, you know, give him the address just in case, you know, anybody calls for the dog. And they do, and he tells his brother about it. And they decide to go to these people to the camp farm, and they send Hercules, and the dog attacks, I mean, attacks Jonathan. You know, he almost kills him until Einstein shows up and saves him. Saves Jonathan's life. You also find out that uh, Lex has something to do with the dogs. Experiments at Luther Kobe has lots of other places. Even though Lex says, well, Lord, I don't think it's any business for what it is because I got this dog here I need. And she has these abilities. You know. The dog throughout the episode when the club realizes the dog has these abilities. And then does the dog have a, you know, like a friendship, you know, they think that he needs the dog. And when the dog ends up, when Einstein ends up in trouble, ends up going back to these people, to the, uh, they call the Greenfield, the Greenfield brothers, who basically, you know, I saw his wife, Clark goes to save him, but Clark is weakened by the kryptonite. The Greenfield brothers see them and, of course, decide to burn down the truck and kill Clark. And the other dog, until Einstein jumps in and saves him, he also saves Hercules, and Hercules runs away, and Clark knocks the Greenfield brothers out, and basically they decided to adopt the dog, you know, adopt the son, and of course name him Shelby. And while uh, during the episode questions Jason's involvement with his mother's scheme, so Jason has been doing some secret stuff for his mother, uh, you know, gets hired for Lex by a job because Lex felt bad for firing him, so gets him to do some work for him. Yeah. Even though, of course, he doesn't trust Lex. I think he basically hires him to find one of the stones, which, of course, the Tigs are trying to search for. And, of course, Lana's mother, I mean, Jason's mother, Jimmy, doesn't trust Lana because Lana is, of course, a descendant of that witch that was burned at the stake, and her ancestor was the one that did it. So, and the witch will revenge on the Tigs family. So, and another favorite episode of mine is called Scarred. Uh, Jason, of course, is in China. They're in Sh Shanghai. And even though, you know, she wanted to call us Jason. He's like, I'm in Metropolis. But then she hears a Chinese man. I was like, well, you're not there. He's, of course, searching for one of the stones. Last comes up and like, you think I really want to trust somebody, hurt somebody, if I want to keep an eye on them? Then they have the Chinese authorities chase them who of course play after the stone themselves. Uh, anyway, Joel contacts Clark, Clark goes to the cave and tells him, you need to get those stones back. All three of these stones to go back, kill out. Because if you don't, you're going to put the world in danger. You are not responsible for this, so go. And of course, Lionel wants to go. See, you know, she goes to Lionel. Of course, Lionel, who was after President Sest, and just be a good man now. He finds a charity. He's trying to change. And he helps Lionel out. He gives her a map to it and Lex and Lex and, they get, Lex and Jason get arrested by the Chinese authorities they beat them they torture them they electrocute them they eventually capture Lana too and Lana of course becomes the, the witch Isabel again she did another set which I'll talk about later but and Isabel decides to go for the stone and of course Clark has to well Clark he tries to search for the map of the stone can't go closer because it's protected by kryptonite, green kryptonite, which weakens him. Yeah. And Clark must battle Isabel. I like the scene where he's battling as well. They have a little sword fight. And eventually with the stones, they, they touch the stones and it's able to get Lana back to herself. It was all interesting to see them in China, though, but, and of course, the stone is just gone. We found out Jason took it, but Lex knows more about the stones than he's saying. He's been searching for these stones for quite a bit, as we saw in the beginning of the season. And of course, Lex doesn't, nobody knows that Jason, of course, took it. Yeah. And he's hiding it. But Scott was definitely good. I've seen him going to China and found the Lex. Very interesting. I'm just glad the episode took him took place in China. It was very interesting. Instead of in Smallville. <laughs> Sorry. 
Another favorite episode of mine is called Lucy. This is where we meet Lois Lane's younger sister, Lucy Lane. Bubba Peyton was, and I know she was in The Flash as well as The Golden Glider, so anyway. But anyway, Lucy, of course, we see, you know, skiing, basically running from a lung shark. Basically, they become quite the scan artist. She calls Lois, and she comes over to the house just to visit. We see the tour Smallville, and of course, she owns this guy $50,000. Uh, Clark finds her trying to steal some money in the town. like, really? You steal him? And she tells them the truth about the guy that she owes money to. So they try to go to Lex for help. And their sister's getting to her. Lex is like, ladies, please. You know, they try to make it set up. Of course, the guy ends up being a cop and knocks Lex out and kidnaps them both. I like this episode also because Clark, trying to save Lois and Lucy, jumps on the truck. He, like, like he, like in season, I think it was season two or season one. No, season Season 2, because Lionel was blind, where he jumps across the building. This time he jumps across the, the bridge and onto a truck, which catches onto it and stops the truck and knocks out the guy. But what's interesting, though, you know, you see Lo, 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 her and her sister fight about who was better. That She says that she was always there for Lucy. She, she was practically her mother because their mom died when they were young. Lois' mother died when she was six. So her... So she pretty much had to protect and look after her sister, but she's jealous of her, but even though Lucy's like, no, you've got the good life, I have to be the perfect daughter, and I'm already not. Of course, she found out that she, of course, is a scam artist and tricked them all along. They're going to arrest Lucy, but Lucy escapes at the end. But it was a very interesting episode to see her sister come in, so, yeah, and I enjoyed it. And, of course, to obey the general, their father, their dad, but they call him the general, basically. But it was a good episode. I did enjoy Lucy. All right, then another, in my opinion, this is definitely one of the best of the series, and that is an episode called Onyx. Onyx is an episode where we do see a glimpse of the future Lex Luthor, but Lex and his scientist, his his doctor scientist, are of course in his his experiment was Luthor Corp. They test the green kryptonite, the the meteor rock, and it turns black into black kryptonite. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the season, the black kryptonite. First, she's like, gets the dog to go away, and the black kryptonite, I really enjoy this episode, but anyway, black kryptonite, like, attacks, like, uh, you know, and Lex is like, I'm alright, and they go away, and then, of course, it splits two versions of Lex, basically the future Lex Luthor, of course, the Lex Luthor we would know and come as the villain Lex Luthor. He's still the good Lex Luthor, though, the original one. Lex just is in the hospital, is like, yeah, we're okay, we were testing... You know, the meteor rock, it just went black, and he's going to go, he's like, Clark, I'll show you, you know. And Chloe, who's also there, pretty much, she sees Lex, the evil version of Lex, which she doesn't know, because being fused, <laughs> that this Lex kills his doctor. He basically kills the scientist, just to get rid of him, get him out of the way, so he can't bring them back together. He's like, this evil Lex Luthor is out now, you know. And basically, Lex Alexander, basically say Alexander Luther is like, Hello Lex, hello me, knocks him out, basically puts, you know, a mask on to hide. And he's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to show the world the real Lex Luther. And eventually he goes to Lana, basically confesses his feeling. Lana's like, Lana's like, Lex, what are you doing? I was like, what I've always wanted to do. Lana well, was like you, and kisses her. Is like, and then when she doesn't want, like Lana, you can live with me as a queen, or you can live on the streets. But anyway, I'm taking the talent from you. Yeah, I'm shutting it down. I was like, what? You know, where do I live? Well, in a dumpster. I don't care. You know. And this Lex also tries to kill Evil Lex. Tries to kill Chloe and uh, Clark. Of course, Chloe has some Clark uses powers, basically. Clark is able to hit down, you know, and he sees that he really sees these abilities. But he recognizes later that the evil Lex beforehand, when the good Lex was talking to him about, you know, what they did, and he sees Clark getting affected by the meteor rock, the green meteor rock, the evil Lex realizes, well, this is a weakness. Basically, he comes to Clark in the barn. He's like, where's Lex? He's like, I am the real Lex. Don't you get it? I was like, where's the real Lex? He was like, Okay, Clark, I'll tell you where he is. I got him in the basement and the mansion. 
you know, and if I feel like torturing him, when I'm, I just torture him when I feel him blue. You know, I like how this Lex was just evil and psychotic. He's like, you know, torture him a little bit when I'm feeling a little blue. <laughs> and then he attacks Lex. He's like, well, you're going to join me. You're going to bring this world to the knees. He's like, I know about your business clothes. I know what you're talking about. He's like, oh, Clark, you can hide it all you want. You've hidden all this secret from me years, but now I know. And after threatening, you know, to George Bush in the real life, Clark gets mad, chokes him, but of course he has the a kryptonite ring. He's like, yeah, I know about the green meter rock, Clark, and punches him out, and Clark, I mean, uh, Jonathan and Martha come out and say, Lex, what do you do? He's like, hey, it's me, Lex Luthor. Yeah, your son's going to, you know, what do you want, you know, Martha's like, what do you want, Lex? The world, Mrs. Kent. And your son's going to help me bring it to his knees. And he's like, now he's either going to do it or... And shoots Jonathan like, something like that happens. Clark wants to tap it, and he's like, you know, got the curtain and I bring, and we can start. And, you know, I'd like to see a bit more of that scene going on, but then instead he, gives, he walks away and gives him a choice. And the evil Lex wants to kill his Lex, but he doesn't know what happened to him if he does. And he tells my the girl like, you're a bunch of mine, I'm the real Alexa, I'm the real you! You know, and, you know, uh, Le uh, Clark tries to save him, but Lex, you know, uses the kryptonite. And as he's almost about to kill the Lex, Clark uses his vision to the ring, and he gets, makes a black kryptonite. And then, of course, the girl Lex just switch back. And Lex is, at the end of this, is like, well, I have that so much evil inside me. He apologizes to Lana, to Clark, and... To, for what he for what that evil Lex did, he's like, is that the real me? And of course, we knew that we know that Lex will eventually be like that in the future. That would be the real him. But anyway, Alex was an interesting episode just to get a peek of what Lex Luthor will be like. You know, I said, you're right about me, Mr. Kent. I am the villain of the story. Oh, and by the way, he basically, like I said, Lionel who wants to has a change of heart, wants to go back. Just he wants to be a good man, go to charities and stuff. Lex intimidates him. He's like, you're just a weak old man. You should have stayed in prison. He's like, come on, Jed. Get mad. And he sort of was like, no, son. And he's like, you're just a weak old man. He's like, get... And Lionel pushes him. And he's like, you're just a weak old man. And then he cuts him right here. And then Lionel comes up to being, you know, back in the suit. And there's back to being Lionel Luther as himself, usually. I cancel the charity. You know what, Lex? A man can't change his nature. Can't deny his own nature. Can he, Lex? You gotta be yourself. You gotta be who you are. You can't change that. And then walks away. And he's like, that evil Lex, of course, changed him. So, but Lex was a real good episode. So. And then an episode called Spirit. Chloe is pretty much nominated for Pong Queen. You have this girl named I think Dawn. Yeah, this girl named Dawn who pretty much wants to be Pong Queen. You know, her boyfriend dumps her. She's just a very stuck up girl, you know, very much like a mean girl. And she pretty much decides to go out with her. She's driving, not paying attention, of course. Yeah, well, when you drive, pay attention. She basically gets into a wreck off of a cliff, and basically, you know, it's kryptonite meter rocks on there, which she pretty much now has the ability to be like a walking zombie, and she pretty much possesses anybody that she touches. She realizes this when she possesses Martha Kent. Kent she's like, I'm Martha Kent. So Don pretty much, you know, he talks like this, like, later, you know. <laughs> it's funny, this is hilarious to see, uh, Antonio Toll just, you know, in the, in the kitchen, just dancing and rocking out. And he's like, oh, hey, hey, son. And he's like, you want dinner? Here's ice cream. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, but anyway, that was just hilarious. At least I thought, you know. 
And she inhabits, I think, the body of Lana next, and then a few people at the school. Lana, of course, John and Lana's business and Lana's body kills, you know, kills her boyfriend, electrocutes him. And John, who, of course, wants to become the prom queen, you know, takes for like, care of his Lois and Lois' his body. Lois is like, how did I get here? And Don, now and Chloe's body, is like, Thank you, and we go Don, you know, this person that said was like, nah, boo, well, we Chloe and Don get so mad. We see this in the beginning of the episode where she uh knocks John and Ken out, you know, gets them all out and, you know, goes a mop, releases it with fire, tries to start a fire and Clark of course stops her, he's like, I can be anybody I want Clark, anybody. She just as Clark has his powers now, but of course Jonathan, you know, has a little kryptonite, he's like Go away, spawn Don. Go away, and Don's spirit, of course, flies away. Uh, Chloe gets, you know, sees Clark using his powers, sees him, or sees his weakness. Of course, pretends to be asleep. But, uh, it was a good episode. I enjoyed it. All right, and then an episode called Blank. Little fair amount Blank. So you have Jonathan Bennett guest star as Kevin Grady, a boy who can basically use his powers, abilities to. Many people lose their memories. He arrives in town. Clark tries to stop him. He uses his powers from Clark, which basically erases his entire memories because Clark is different. Clark, of course, forgets who he is. Sorry, forgets who he is. So Chloe has to help him out. She sees him using his powers. He, <laughs> the door is like, and he smashes the door open, which is funny. Then after smashing the door. Clark, sorry. Oh, I'm tired. Long day at work, but anyway. And of course, you know, she makes sure you just remove her secrets to anybody. And Lex, of course, wants to talk to him. And of course, she's able to say, Clark, be careful. Using Clark's, of course, super hearing. You know, be very careful because Lex is trying to get him to reveal his secret. He tries to get him to go to the caves and see if there's a door open, but. He's able to make an excuse, and finding that, of course, he probably can't trust Lex, well, after that. You find out more about Kevin, that his brother, you know, was he shot his brother by accident, but that's not all seemed to be true, as you end up finding out, as Kevin, you know, finds out that his dad was actually the one that did it, and made him go to Belle Reeve, you know, or, 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 Clark went to, I think, in season three. I think it was season three. Last season, where he yeah, his memories transported away and made him forget about it. Yeah. Dr. Grady, of course, decides to kidnap Clark to hide up the secret. Tries to use the forget memory on her. Clark gains his memory back by one by one, and you know the Lois and the sheriff is able to show up. Chloe is about to crush, and you see Clark do this. He's just always like Lois. I can explain, sheriff. And of course, Jonathan Bennett, who you know after he helps come back, Kevin uses his powers and makes them forget. He's like Lo Lois is like Clark. Maybe it's a future so help her entire. And he says, "Thank you for that." You know, he's like, "What are you going to do now?" Well. I guess just move on with life. I'll find something. It's like, thank you, Clark, for the help. And it's like, thank you for your help as well. You know, and, you know, overall good episode. You know, Clark eventually goes back to remember who he is. He does that, like, like, he's like, did something happen? Did you try to trust the like, No, nothing happened. Just to talk about, you know, memories, the car crash. And of course, like, slime. But anyway, oh, when he talks to Lana, if I want to go on a date. Yeah. And Lana, he does forget, and they said, of course, two main friends. And then, of course, my favorite was, last favorite episode, y'all, was Commitment. Yes, this is the final episode of season four, where Genevieve, after her and her son kidnapped like Sleeper, which I'll get into, uh, confronts Lana about it, tries to attack Lana, and Lana, of course, being the descendant of the witch Isabel, gets the stone and stabs her with it and Clark is having this dream in the in the episode about 
a meteor shower from his second coming, a threat coming, and he tells Gerard to his heart, he is what he was like, it's too late, son, too late, Carol. If this threat is coming, you've got to do something about it. You know. you got, you got to take care of this problem. you got to take care of this threat. And so Clark, throughout this episode, goes to find the stones. Mara eventually gives him the stone. She goes to Lex, you know, saying that she did, and they cover, they had you in his body. And after uh, Jason was shot and working with his mother now, they're trying to get the stones. Clark is able to get, eventually, the stones after having his dream. Uh, Clark also graduates this episode. So him, Clark, him and Chloe graduate. That's nice graduation, but he gets stopped when the military shows up to stop the ceremony to get everybody back off. <laughs> Cramp. Oh, God. Ooh, yeah, that hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Just having a cramp here. I'll work through it, though. Yeah. Anyway. Jason arrives at the farm holding Jonathan Mark at gunpoint. One thing to know about Clark, of course, they're not going to, they refuse to tell him anything, and he attacks them. <sighs> yeah, just got a cramp. <sighs> Second one <laughs> this week. <sighs> Alright. Yeah, second one this week. Anyway, he holds them at gunpoint. The meteor shower hits. Clark saves a little boy from getting saved, you know, from getting hit by a meteor. But boy's like, you're not my daddy. <laughs> After Clark retrieves the stones, he's able to go, like, to the, almost like, it looks like Alaska. And, of course, at, you know, at the end of the season, Lana gets in the black court plane. She, the plane is up crashing, she ends up walking out, she sees this spaceship at the end of the season. Uh, Lionel ends up in a coma and gets called to by the stone himself. I guess Jarrell uses Lionel's body as a vessel. And Lex tells his father, he's like, Dad, you got the man you always wanted as a son, you know. You get the son you always wanted now. I guess Lex embracing, eventually beginning to embrace his dark destiny. Yeah. People end up in danger. Chloe eventually falls in there because, well, he tries to get the, the stone. And he does get it, but he passes out from the green kryptonite until Chloe helps him out. And she's like, he's like, Lex is like, Chloe, where's Clark? You know, wh who was it? Was it Clark? And they go to the cave. Lex is about to see Clark's secret, but she's like, Lex. And then she knocks him out. And she falls in there. And at the end of the episode, the final, the final part of the episode, conclusion of it is where Clark like throws the crystal because the stones turns into this crystal. He throws it, and of course, I, I assume in season five we'll be getting a uh, uh, season five. We'll be getting the uh, Fortress of Solitude. So glad they're bringing in that finally. And of course, Jason T dies at the end of the episode being hit by a meteor. Oh yeah, Clark gets transported to the Arctic, the Arctic, not Alaska, Arctic, to throw the crystal. But overall, it was a good ending, a good series final, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, guys, we still got some episodes left. Now I'm on the okay ones. So, okay, let's get started with an episode that I thought was, the first one I thought that was okay called Jinx. This is where we have the character of the foreigner saint sheet named Michelle Mispilis. Mr. and Mr. and Mr. and you know the character that plays tricks on Superman and stuff. Pretty much has the power of persuasion and he uses it to fix supporting so 
like Clark is playing football, he's able to say, like, trip, you know. He can fix the game supporting his ability to make you do things you not want to do. Uh, he's part of the Luther Corp exchange program. He just likes to cut himself with a knife by accident. He tries to make his bed to keep his fish in. He makes a bed with Chloe. Gives Chloe money and stuff. Chloe wants to write the like, Chloe, I don't want you to write the article. And he basically forces her to kiss him. And he even threatens Clark. You know, you can use Clark's powers against him because he tells Clark, choke. And he makes Clark choke himself. And Clark, you know, and Chloe, Chloe they, they, have fun. they get to stop him. They get a football game. Uh, when they discover his weakness, they pretty much, like, kind of like use a, super, a supersonic a sonic system, supersonic system, kind of just to waste the energy. He's going to start playing. He tries to heal Chloe, but it doesn't work as Clark stops him. And, of course, he gets aggressive about Lex, surrenders to him. And Lex pretty much takes him to Lab 33.1 Luth Corp, where he helps Miguel regain his ability. So it was like, wow, tracking in there. What's Lex got there? <laughs> More superpower humans? But James was alright. I, I wasn't a fan of the character. I just didn't like the way they did Mr. M, but that's just me. Alright, then an episode called The Spell, which I thought was okay. It wasn't really big into the episode. So we well, see that the witch, Margaret Isabel, gets her and her sisters get burned. Eventually Isabel does get the spirit of Lana, you know, possess the body of Lana. And Lana, you know, as Isabel, you know, tries to grab hair, get hairs, so she can grow her sister's back. You know. And she tries to cut Clark's hair <laughs> but with, a, with scissors, but it doesn't work because of his strength. And they come to party, or they look really sexy in these black dresses, but they party, and I thought it was funny when everybody's dancing and their boxers, and even Clark is dancing his boxers, and his parents go up to another, like, what happened? <laughs> After Lama becomes possessed, Clark says he's got to stop the three of them and save his friends. And Isabel and her sisters try to attack Clark. They throw some mushrooms at him. He's able to use his heat vision. Of course, they would take his powers away, chain him up. Jason comes to save him later. He realizes he's got to stop them from taking the stone. Does take it away from them and eventually able to get one of them back. Well, Spore was just okay. Alright, then another episode, in my opinion, was Recruit. This is where, Le I mean, Clark, where Clark gets to think about going to MAU, but Lois, who is, you know, drinking, having a drinking party, she basically kicks this guy who tries to mess with her. He gets paralyzed, and she gets accused of paralyzing the guy. Of course, she didn't do it. She has to apologize for it, but Clark, meanwhile, Jeff Jones, who basically, sh you know, is a college insider, she says, Clark, you'll be living like this. You'll be coming and met you. And he has the power to make people paralyzed when he touches you. But Clark sees that. And he doesn't want nobody to know a secret. Well, then we eventually find out he taxed all this. He tries to be out of but Clark comes down to the, to the sewers and saves Lois' life. And Lois, of course, is, you know, gets cleared of all charges. Yeah, these teenage girls, of course, want to make out with Clark, but he's just trying to ignore the head. Chloe attempts to learn more about Clark's secret, and she finds out a little bit, like, Clark, why didn't you tell me? But, overall, it was just an okay episode, but Clark does at the end decide that just football is not for him. It's not his destiny, basically. So he quits the football team. Yeah. Alright, then an episode called Ageless. Another okay episode. Clark will learn, learn to discover an, an abandoned baby who they name Evan. Pretty much this baby uh, grows up naturally, well not naturally, in a meter rock sort of way. Like at first he's just a little infant and then he's like a nine-year-old boy and then he grows to be like 15 or 16. Then the episode Clark and them try to help Evan 
try to find his father. They try to experiment on Luther Corp, but he keeps on aging repeatedly. You know, as long as I well, we got to find the blood, you know, what tells him that Luther Corp experiment, we got to find, for Evan, we got to find a donor. The father, you know, she's from the father, but the dad is the one that doesn't do it. was like, no, screw that. I'm not being a father. I'm not a father. I got scared. I ain't got, I don't want nothing to do with it. No. Evan tries to confront his dad and he says, like, don't call me that. Don't call me that. And they struggle a little bit. He doesn't push him, but, you know, the guy falls and gets impelled and ends up dying. And eventually at the end, you know, he ages so much that Stark has to eventually cover Evan and save him. But overall, that was an alright episode. Yeah, the disease it sadly eventually kills him, but hey, it was alright. And then another and then another okay episode of mine is called Forever. Sorry if I'm moving a little fast, but it's almost four twenty six. So yeah, I'll get go a little early because of my work schedule. Anyway, forever. This episode basically is about a photographer named Brandon Nash, who has the power to when he touches people he can like freeze you basically. He rebuilds the school he keeps Chloe captured and eventually Law brings her over and Clark realizes Emily was found out that it's a place called Nash Productions, a place where he rebuilt it. And I like when Chloe's able to talk to the guy even though he's psychotic in the mind. He's like, he's like, what did your dad do when you found out about your powers and stuff? He's like, well, I just, you know, I just froze him <laughs> and laughs about it. But, you yeah, know, he's got the people captured at the school. And you know, it's got that message of the episode that, hey, at the end of the episode that, you know, you can't live in the past life, you can't live in high school forever, you just have to move on with life, you know. And I guess Brandon didn't understand that, he just didn't want to move on, just wanted to stay in high school forever, get the people captured. Eventually, though, at the end, before he's able to try to kill Lana, he tries to grab Clark, but his hand freezes, and he, then he just, you know, freezes himself, falls back, and his body turns to wax, and falls and of course he dies. But well, I thought it was okay. So I mean I get the message, you know, you can't live in the past, you can't live in the past before you have to move on. I get that. But for me I just wasn't big into it, but I thought it was alright. I just enjoy those episodes a lot more talking. Okay guys, well hope I talked good enough. But that is it for my thoughts. That's very good shows and some okay ones which I'll put in the description below of Smallville season four. So yeah, what I think of the season, I loved it. I thought it was good. Yeah, I like some of the witchcraft stuff I didn't like. I think you don't need that. This is not a horror show. This is a superhero drama. Stick to that. You know, weird stuff like that. They need to just keep it out of here. I'm like, yeah, you didn't need the whole thing with the witch. I don't think that was interesting. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention in the season where Jason <laughs> shoots, uh, Cl I mean, uh, Clark, uh, us with a dark gun and they kidnap him and Flash relax a little bit, tries to tell him about Clark. Everything's connected to Clark. Everything's connected to Clark. And before he can say anything, I'll shoot him dead. Well, as he thinks. But it's normal season four. I think it's the weird stuff, some okay episodes, and some of the weird stuff, which I think they were just highly weird in this season. But overall, it's a good season. It's very enjoyable. I like how we get to three, the three stones, which is interesting. And Clark's bold attempt to keep those sound from destroying Europe, and Clark also becoming a football star was cool, and Lana working on this and T, which I thought they had to do a good job. Really getting the cast member out of the show, and seeing Lex go more on his evil side, especially the honest episode, seeing the future Lex he would become. And in this season, he goes, you know, more into his darker path. It was interesting, and seeing Clark embrace his destiny a little more, and finding building Fortress of Solitude which we're going to see at the end of next season. So, yeah, just really good. But Smallwood Season 4, great in my opinion. I'm going to give my rating for Smallwood Season 4 is 4 to 5 stars and a thumbs up. All right, guys. I mean, take a while to get up, you know. This time's trying to fix my cramp. <laughs> Hopefully next time I won't be cramping in the next video. Anyway, guys. Next will be my favorite episodes of Smallville, Season 5. So, Season 5 will be next. For continuing my Superman Marathon, Total of Smallville, Season 5 will be next. So, but anyway, 
season four, really good, really enjoyed the season, I like the story. I like seeing Terrence Stamp come back and Jan Seymour in this season, that was good. Oh yeah, Lionel poisons her because she threatens Lex. <laughs> and Lionel says, any threat to a Luther is a threat to me. But anyway, the cast is really good. It just keeps on getting better, in my opinion. So, anyway, I enjoyed Smallville Season 4. 4 to 5 stars is my rating for Smallville Season 4. So, guys, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of Smallville Season 4? And what are your favorite episodes of Season 4 of Smallville? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time in my favorite, thoughts slash favorite episodes of Smallville Season 5. So, this will be next. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.